Hey friends, welcome to TypeScript Fundamentals. In this series, we're going to be learning TypeScript, but we're going to learn TypeScript through relatable examples, which are going to be a lot, so you can grasp the fundamental concepts of TypeScript and have confidence how to type things in your own project. So how I imagine this video is supposed to be used, this is mostly a reference. So we're going to be learning about all of these concepts, so don't worry and get overwhelmed because you don't have to know everything. TypeScript really isn't that scary as most people say and I'm going to show you how. But yeah, we're going to go through this. So you're going to know how to type things in your own project. That is the best way to learn TypeScript in my opinion. So if you have an old project or a new one, just dust it off or create a new one and just embrace the errors and that's the best way to learn. And you should just eat the cost of learning it because at the start you might be like, oh man, this is like taking me so much time. Why do I have to type TypeScript? After a couple of days of doing it, you're going to be just fine. So yeah, so let's get started. So you're already using TypeScript, believe it or not, and you may be scratching your head right now. So let me just show you a disclaim in theory, right? So if we say Pokemon, and then we're going to create an array of Pokemon, we're going to say Bulbasaur, Charmander, and Squirtle. So if we hover over the value Pokemon in our editor, we're going to see that cons Pokemon colon is string and these brackets. So this really means that this is an array of strings. So the editor already inferred this type for us, but not the editor, it's TypeScript under the hood. So for example, if we go here and we type Pokemon, so have you ever wondered how your auto completion and IntelliSense works? So for example, if we press the period, we can get all the array methods here. And how awesome is that? Imagine web development before this, like, imagine not getting any feedback at all. You would have to go on MDN and look up array methods and etc. And also we can use string methods on this because it knows it's an array. So how awesome it is. So for example, if I type map and then it's going to give us even more help. So we don't even have to look at the MDN documentation for this. We can see that map accepts a callback, right? So function that can have a value, index, and array, etc. And then we can even see what it returns any and this type. So this might be really confusing to you at first because you don't know TypeScript yet, but you're going to even understand this later as we go through this series. But this is really just to put attention to how TypeScript is already built into your editor. But let's take this concept a bit further. So since it inferred that this is an array of strings, what happens if we say push a number and nothing? So imagine if this is production or whatever, and <laughs> by mistake you do something like this and boom. So how do we get help from TypeScript? So the most basic thing we can start it, we can add TS check. And if we hover over it, we're going to see a useful TypeScript error message. So argument of type number is not assignable to parameter of type string. And how awesome is that? And we get this for free without using any build tool, etc. We didn't even <laughs> get TypeScript yet, right? and our editor is already being super useful. But of course, you're not going to do this in most projects. This is just me showing you the concept of the TypeScript is not all or nothing. So for example, if you have an existing JavaScript project, if you decide to convert it to TypeScript, you don't have to type everything at once and change your code base, right? So this is really to show you how TypeScript is incremental, that you can start by doing something simple as TS check, or maybe you can just turn one of your files from index.js to index.ts, and then you can get auto completion and benefits from TypeScript, which is awesome. Imagine when you're using other libraries, because most of libraries today that you use are typed in TypeScript. So you get all the benefits from them, like auto completion, etc., without even having to use TypeScript yourself. So how is this really possible? So if I press Control shift x to go into my extensions, so we can go into the built-in ones and we can see some usual suspects here. So look at here, here is Emmet, which is really awesome. But if we go further down here, we can see the TypeScript and JavaScript language service. So this is what really powers auto-completion for TypeScript and JavaScript in your editor. And this is something portable that other editors can also implement. So your WebStorms, your Vims and etc. can also use this because if you go here in the post, I even talk about this briefly. Let me just find it. Yeah, so here it is. So this is the language server that provides you with sophisticated features such as code completion, refactoring, syntax highlighting and errors and warning in your editors. Because Visual Studio Code and TypeScript are made by Microsoft, it explains the tight integration. But as I said, it doesn't mean you're left in the dark if you're using another editor like WebStorm or Vim because it's the TypeScript language server which is available as a plugin in those editors. Let me show you a couple of more examples just so we get really a firm grasp why TypeScript is so useful and beloved by many people. So we can really 
delete this example so we can create a Pokemon. It's going to be an object we can say going to be Pikachu. It's going to have a let's see, wait. Yeah, that's it. So we can do that. And you're already going to notice one thing. So if we try to make a mistake, this is already going to be hard because we already have an inferred type for this. So for example, if we hover over Pikachu, we can see it has a type of name that's a string and weight that's a number. So even if we try to goof it up, we have auto completion here. But let's say you don't have it because in other cases where you don't have TypeScript and are just using JavaScript, you're not going to get all the benefits. So for example, let's say you goof this up and then you have no idea what went wrong, right? And then you spend five minutes, 10 minutes, whatever, debugging this in your console, inside your browser, instead of moving on, right? Because of these simple mistakes, because you just mistyped something or whatever. For example, if we go here, let me just rename this file from index.js to TypeScript. And it already warns us about this error. So if we hover over this, property weight does not exist on type, etc and even gives you useful information such as did you mean wait? And sure I did, so we can say wait, and that's it. And this is how TypeScript can really help you. Is this back and forth communication between you and the editor before you executed your code in the browser and then try to debug these trivial errors inside there? So when you're using just regular JavaScript, in most cases, the problem is that you just hope that things work. So imagine if you get something from an API, etc., and then you're just guessing blindly what did you receive and etc. And this can really eat at your time developing, right? So let me show you another example where TypeScript shines, which is in your modern JavaScript front-end frameworks. And the most awesome part about that is that TypeScript is pre-configured, so you can just install the framework or whatever, go through the setup step, and you're going to have TypeScript available in your project. So if I go here in the example, this is just a Svelkit example. It's akin to Next.js or Nux if you're not familiar with Svelkit, but this really isn't important because we're all familiar with concepts such as components and etc. And this is all this is. So, I, so here I have a simple Pokemon component and here is one route. Let me just collapse this. I'm going to move this here. So this is just a simple component that uses TypeScript and this is just a prop in Svelte. So we can say export let name and then we can show the name of the Pokemon. Let me show you where TypeScript shines. So for example, if I go here, let me just include this. So if I start typing the name of the component Pokemon, it's going to be smart about the auto import because it's using TypeScript. So yes, yeah, so you already have a working import. So let's see how, so if we hover over the Pokemon component, it's going to say that it's not assignable to type name string because it knows this is required. Otherwise, if we, for example, set the default, how it works in Svelte, this is going to be optional. So this error is going to go away. But yeah, this is really awesome. So yeah, this is that back and forth communication between you and the editor and not having to figure it out at runtime, right? So even if we say something like it, so we can say Pikachu, and then it's going to say, hey, this really doesn't exist or you shouldn't include this because I'm aware of the types, right? So we can just always say name, and then it's going to stop complaining. So this is really a huge benefit. Or for example, I don't know, you would maybe <laughs> misspell this for whatever reason. And if you don't have TypeScript, you would literally waste like five, 10 minutes or whatever on these small mistakes. And it's really not about how this is a small mistake and this is a trivial example, but it's more about these mistakes add over time and just eat at you, <laughs> at your development time and cost, right? This is a simple example, right? But you're doing many other things and not just this simplified example, right? So you lose focus, track, attention or whatever you do, one stupid mistake, and then you're spending the next half an hour or an hour trying to debug it in your browser, right? And that's really a waste of time. So TypeScript is really awesome. So let me show you another example how TypeScript is aware of some flaws in JavaScript itself. So for example, here we have a function log Pokemon that's going to accept an array of Pokemon that are going to be strings. But let's say for example, we also pass null. And we're also having a naive check here to check if the Pokemon is an object because that means it's an array. So we can uh, loop over those values and log them out. Otherwise we're going to return whatever we got here. But it says if we hover over here, that Pokemon object is possibly null, but how is that possible? And that's really because of the flaw in JavaScript. So for example, if we go here and we enter node, we can say type of null, and it says it's an object. 
And if you do this in production, then it's like, oops. But of course, there's things you have to be aware about. So for example, you might be thinking if you've seen this type checking, so all right, I don't have to do checks in my code anymore because TypeScript is going to catch that. And you would be wrong because TypeScript is JavaScript runtime with a compile time checker. So the runtime is when JavaScript code gets executed, but the compile time is when TypeScript code gets compiled to JavaScript code. And TypeScript only checks your code at compile time. So this means that you can't rely on TypeScript for checks in your code code such as the user input when you ship your code. So if you look at this example, let me just take this example order editor. So we have our index.ts file here. Let me just copy this over. So for example, you're safe in your editor here because it says type number is not assignable to type string, but TypeScript errors aren't JavaScript syntax errors. So if you try to do this in production, it's going to explode, right? So you have to put checks and balances inside your code regardless. And you might be thinking, oh, I'm just typing more code like why am I doing this and it's the same thing I said before is this constant communication back and forth with your editor that informs you of these silly mistakes in advance so you don't have to spend hours of your time and honestly wasting it trying to debug your code so if you look down here where I have this code we can just copy it over so you can just have a look at it here so this is really what you should do in your code. So you need to add checks and balances. So if we have add Pokemon and we accept a Pokemon name that's a string, we need to check if it exists. If the type of the Pokemon name isn't a string, then we can throw an error. You have to specify a Pokemon name, etc. And then we can do our stuff. And this is how you really make your code safe. And TypeScript doesn't protect you at runtime, right? Because fundamentally TypeScript doesn't change how JavaScript works. And this is really awesome because you can take advantage of gradual adoption. So, so far we've seen how we can read the benefits of TypeScript without using TypeScript directly. But if you're on the fence about TypeScript, there's a thing that's called JS doc, which you can use. It's basically comments as types. And this is really an interesting history because JSDoc is something which hilariously I think backfired on TypeScript because JSDoc was like a bridge <laughs> to TypeScript. It was like, hey, you can use TypeScript, but if you're terrified, first you can use JSDoc and then you can ease into it. But a lot of people were like, oh, I can use JSDoc without any build step, etc. Okay, let me just use JSDoc. And the TypeScript team was like full that full meme. They were like, wait, no, you can't do that. <laughs> But yeah, let me just show you this example. So we can say, and let me just even rename this file so I can just, yeah, we can just say JavaScript and then we can say Pokemon is an array. And if we have a Pokemon and Pokemon name, Pokemon push name. So we can just add this comment here. And VS Code already has this autocomplete for you. You can already see it says JS doc comment. So we can say that param is string. So you can say name, Pokemon name, and you can even give it a description. So this is add Pokemon. And then let's see if we hover over the function, you can see here it is add Pokemon, param name, Pokemon name. So let's summarize what TypeScript is. So TypeScript is a static type checker, which means that TypeScript checks your code before you run it. TypeScript is a superset of JavaScript, which you might hear often. That only means that JavaScript program is also a valid TypeScript program, and that's really just a fancy term for that. TypeScript preserves the runtime behavior of JavaScript, which means TypeScript doesn't change how JavaScript works, so any valid TypeScript code is valid JavaScript code. TypeScript compiles to JavaScript, and once those types are compiled, they're gone, because the browser or an environment like Node.js really doesn't understand TypeScript, and that's why you don't get type safety <laughs> during runtime, right? So you have to have checks and balances. So using TypeScript is a gradual adoption. Alright, so I hope you found this introduction useful, so let's start learning TypeScript.